a good morning to uh, the western side of the world, uh, the US, uh, South America. Uh, good afternoon uh, to Europe, probably good evening on the uh, almost eastern side of Europe and getting into Asia. Welcome back to uh, the next uh, uh, yeah, part of the series of the 101 development. This one is uh, number five and where we'll be diving into more specifics on uh, fields. Um, today we have a speaker, David Singleton again. He uh, was pleased to pick this one up after he had uh, handled the uh, third one on fields at, at let's say, a general level. Um, so today, David, very welcome. You might know David uh, being around in this world for, well, almost three decades and being uh, one of the first MVPs in the NAF world. So um, we're happy to have you back again, David, while you're sitting there uh, in what I understand, uh, 40 degrees Celsius uh, out there uh, in the uh, Arabic, uh, uh, what do they call it? Island? Well, spring. Island, maybe not. Spring. Yeah. 40 degrees we call spring. You call it spring, yeah, out there. So, uh, well, David, um, we will get to you, but first let me uh, go to some of the next slide to, uh, let's say, do the uh, uh, household thing. So if you could uh, skip to this one or yeah, to the next one. So uh, as you all know, this will be recorded. It's just a rephrase for people joining in the new. You can find this recording probably uh, an hour after that we have uh, stopped the session today. And uh, yes, if you have questions today, use the uh, questions window on GoToWebinar. I will be the mon monitoring it. I might be answering it by writing, but Preferably, I will pose the questions to David um, um, where it fits in his uh, story. And uh, of course, once again and every time again, thanks to Liberty Grove for hosting us and Joe Mattis specifically for help, helping us on the technical side, uh, getting the recording done, etc. So thank you very much, uh, Joe. Could you skip, to, uh, uh, jump to the next one? Yeah, uh, there are uh, remaining at the moment two other sessions uh, in, um, in four weeks' time on June 19, Klaus Munstrom has uh, volunteered to pick up uh, reports. Um, and uh, four weeks later, we will have uh, uh, Dave Machanik again. He had done a previous uh, webinar some time ago, and he will pick up on queries. Uh, as you can read below at the lower side, we'll continue after summer season, and then we will start diving into CAL. This still needs to be planned, but it will be probably again uh, a four weeks rhythm. There's, I think, another sli slide left uh, for me. Yes. So, any other webinars? We're busy on getting people for webinars. We have some people at the hook on the hook, but um, it's a busy period in the year, and uh, to get dates set, uh, people are busy with some projects. So, if you have anybody uh, or yourself you would like to uh, uh, get on with a, a topic in one of our we webinars, feel free to contact us. If you haven't been uh, uh, able to see the whole program so far or want to follow it more frequently than only seeing slides in this recording or this session, uh, go to our website and if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, start quickly because we will be switching to the next slide, but this is the uh, URL which you cannot make. Yeah, thank you very much, David. <laughs> but you will be able to, uh, uh, it's also uh, uh, on the recording, so you will be uh, able to uh, uh, see that one again. So, David, I'm going to give the floor to you. And yes, as I told, there's, this is part of your biography, but maybe you would like to add something to that uh, while uh, getting yourself set for this session today. So, David, uh, the floor will be yours. Thank you, Luke, uh, <clears throat> for that nice introduction, and let's get going. So I'll do this brief because we've already done it before, but uh, basically I have been with Navigen a long time, since 1992 now. Uh, I've worked at every aspect of Navigen. I started as an end user. I worked for PCNC, the company that developed Navigen. I've worked at ISVs, partners, everything. So I've <clears throat> done most things, but for my forte is working independently as an independent consultant. Been MVP for 12 years, uh, finished last year. I'm no longer an MVP. And uh, basically, I work in getting partners ready, fixing old systems up. And basically, when something's broken, I get there and fix it up. That's what I do. So, 
we had a session a while ago about uh, fields and that followed on from Luke's uh, initial presentation about tables and we explained about what fields are in Navision and uh, I won't go repeat anything because it's uh, on YouTube, if anyone wants to go back, they can look at that uh, original presentation. And what we did is we looked at fields that were actually stored in SQL, and we looked at what was actually there, what the fields actually were. And uh, our plan today is to go a little bit deeper into more complex things that are a little bit more complex. So there's a lot of different things that we can look at, but uh, we're we're not going to cover everything. So we can start with complex types of data that are uh, Navision objects, that's one type. So we have reports, pages, and XML ports we can create as variables, and we can use them in our code. We can call a report or call an XML port or a record. Record's a very special one. Uh, but we're not going to go into that. That'll come into the coding section. We just want to touch base on it. We have another category of uh, data types, which are basically external objects, like OCXs or data streams, .NETs, files. And these are basically handles within Navision to handle uh, external uh, code and documents uh, different ways. Then we have some special internal, and we're just going to touch on a few, uh, three, uh, three things here. First, we'll have a quick talk about uh, rec record refs, then um, indexes and flow fields. The index and flow fields will be all tied together in one, so we'll go through. And the focus is about uh, vSIFT because uh, it is um, what makes well. Well, it is what made Navision what uh, Navision is. So let's just touch on RecRef. I don't want to go into much detail about this. Uh, it's basically instead. Oh, someone can't stop. Instead of uh, using the name of a variable, variable like sales line or invoice header we can create a reference to a variable by its table number and its field number in Navision. So the, I really can't spell. The real reason for using them is that it should make code iterative. So you can write loops around different fields and whatever you can do. Uh, the thing is, it, 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 record refs, as complex as they are and wonderful as they are, they really have no, they're not actually needed in Navision. And, as I said, I've been in Navision 26 years. I've done about 260 Navision implementations, and I've never once ever used Record Ref in a live implementation for any reason. Never found a purpose for them. Either you figure out a better way to do it, or you write it in C Sharp, or do it somewhere outside of uh, Navision, because I'm not going to go into it. But there are only two places in Navision where uh, Record Ref really is useful and that is changelog and rapid start. So neither of which are programs I ever use because they're both horribly, horribly implemented and more problems they're worth. So record rest, move on from it and get back to the real stuff now. So yeah, just basically getting all of that stuff out of the way because the subtitle that Luke put on this session was indexes and sifts. So we'd like to focus and have a look at that. And I Oh, it's coming up. My slides are out of sequence. That's okay. So <clears throat> there's always a, a big confusion because Navision has always called indexes keys and everyone else in the world calls them indexes. Uh, a, a key, somehow a key in Navision will relate to an index, but it is very different if you're from the SQL world or from any type of database world. It is very different because in Navision, a key is both used for filtering and for sorting. So if you do an order buyer or a where <clears throat> in uh, Navision, you're using a key to do both and they both happen at the same time, which is obviously not an ideal world, but it's how Navision handles it. And that's sort of changed a little bit now. So in the newest versions of Navision, you can sort without a without a, a key. So it's, it becomes more, more normalized. The <clears throat> Navision contains a primary key which is always clustered. Uh, you can change it, but by default, the, first, the primary key is, is the clustered key. And clustered index simply means that all the fields, if I have a table, we said last week, about uh, last session, about its rows and columns, and each column is made up of a field. The fields combined together can be in two 
typically a lot of places, but you would reference them two ways, either through an index or through the table. If you're accessing it through the table, that's the clustered index. So all of the fields bunch together and they create an index which contains the sorting and all of the data. Navision, oh, I just said, adds a, sorry, on top of the standard indexing, Navision has a desire that every index in this, or every key it puts in there is unique. So what it does is it appends the primary key to the every other index. So if you have an, a GL account, a GL entry table, and GL entry table has entry number as its primary key, and you add a key on GL account, then actually your key is GL account, comma, entry number. So you can always uniquely access that, uh, that record. Secondary keys are um, constraints in SQL, uh, nothing special. Now, where we're going to try and have a look at today is a little bit on, on index views. If you've know the old Navision uh, before version 5.0, Navision created what was called SIF technology. And basically within the native database, Navision maintained a separate table that tracked rows and rows of, uh, of data that had uh, totaling columns. And uh, this was transferred across into SQL fairly poorly uh, with some triggers that added it in and did a whole lot of stuff to maintain this technology. Now in version five, uh, that was all moved to vSIF technology. And basically what happens is a view, every time you create an index as a flow field, Navision generates a view. It then puts an index on the view. So the view is of course uh, simply virtual. There's, the view doesn't actually exist in the database. The index does. So what that means is we can take a view, look at the data how we want, and onto that we add an actual index. So that gives you flexibility, but it also gives performance. Now, we're gonna show you this. I'm gonna pull it up in SQL and in Navision and actually show you this. I'm just throwing out the terminology now and working on the philosophy that since this is gonna be recorded, if you come back later, you can maybe understand what I'm saying after you've seen it explained a bit. Now, before we get into this, what, what uh, the whole idea of SIF technology is to be able to create an, an online uh, reporting database. This is always one of those things that was never done. We always had one database where we made our transactions and another database where we did reading. And Navision really changed that by having a really solid way of doing this all in one database. <clears throat> and well, again, I'll show you that in a minute and you we can see why that techno technology is very good. But it's very important to understand that computers change and people have a lot of trouble understanding that. So there was a time when if someone said, oh, I'm putting my Navision database on a RAID 5 array, people would cry, get upset, and me as well. I would get very angry if customers are doing this. But that changed. Uh, RAID technology is completely different now. And the reason we didn't like RAID 5 was that RAID 5 had to create parity and the parity took a long time to write. Now, when you're doing a, with you working with vSIF technology, you are looking at a balance between read performance and write performance. What a view, what a SIF technology gives you is extremely fast reads. It means if I want to report and I want to do it by date or I want a matrix of items by quantity on hand per date by location, Navision's uh, SIF technology allowed us to do that very, very fast with a fairly low-powered server technology. The only problem is that maintaining that is was fairly write intensive. So a lot of work was done to balance that. The thing is that especially with SSDs and other technology with caching, your drives are extremely fast. So even though we're going to push and talk about SIF technology and how wonderful it is, to be honest, unless you've got really big databases, a lot of this can be handled um, uh, very very well now. There was a time when you had to be really careful of how many writes you put on the database, but you will find now 
years ago, maybe 70% of your database was reading and 30% was writing. Now it's more like 90% reads and 10% writes. People are actually using the data now. So it's generally a good idea to make your database more readable than writable because that's where the hard work goes nowadays. So don't get too stuck up in the idea of optimizing index uh, vSIFs and removing them and changing them. So the next thing is that um, on the same token, and it's not too relevant to what we're talking about here, but everything everything matters somehow. You, you're adding every field in Navision, maybe something you'll search on or something you'll use, and every there's different ways to search on those, those fields. And it's important to know that in the older technology of Navision, if you wanted to do a report and you wanted to filter on a field or if you wanted to sort by a field or uh, do a flow field of, to actually calculate a field, every single field had to be in the key. If, if you wanted to have a, the ability to go to your items and say, I want to report this as my item number by variance, by location, by date, by whatever else, every one of those fields had to be in the key. And that's why we see these big, long, massively over-indexed databases with these big, long keys. Now, SQL doesn't need that. SQL is very good at just using what it's got, finding out the best and optimizing it. So don't get too stuck up on having really complex keys. And I'm going to show you an example of, you know, of how that can, can be different. Okay. The, um, the next thing that's important is, Again, the whole idea that the single, sole, and only reason that Navision has SIF technology is for performance and speed. There's no other reason. Everything that you can do with vSIF, you could do another way. But with vSIF, you can do it faster. Okay, so we're only really talking about performance when we look at some of this, this technology. And just an important note is that when you're doing all this and you're experimenting, never get stuck in the idea that we do it this way because we had a customer once that such and such happened because the technology does change. It, it goes up and down and what you think worked in in one piece of code where you had to put fine set, maybe in the next time it needs to be fine minor. So always test each different scenario different ways. So that's the that's sort of the background. But ultimately, we came from a world where the king was the beauty of simplicity. That was really what mattered for Navision. And flow fields were simplicity. They made it extremely simple because they took all the owners of development and uh, design, well, not design, but let's say the, the, the hard crunching and the logical design, it took that off it and handled it all internally. So flow fields made Navision simple. Without Without flow fields, Navision would never have been been as simple to use as it is. So what happened is that flow fields were able to replace your your standard data warehouse, the buckets, uh, because you could just do it on the fly. You could just say what you needed and get it all and, and in it all comes. And if we have a look at this, come on, where's Ooh, got it. <clears throat> Let's have a look at Navision. So Let's have a look at a flow field. And here we go, a flow field. Everybody, I'm sure, has seen this screen a thousand times and more, I'm sure. And here we have a flow field. So what is a flow field? This is a field here that does not exist. The number 5,860,000 5, does not exist in the GL table. It isn't there. Instead, what is happening, if I click on here, You'll think, ah, it's it's stored in the, the general ledger entry table. No, it's not. It's it, it does look like it. It looks like what's happening is Navision is going in here and pulling this sum by adding all these numbers up. But it's not. It's actually stored somewhere else, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But why I came here is just to show you what uh, flow fields give you. Uh, and typically, if we look at something like this is a group, locations, the two we generally would demo would be balance, geo balance, and uh, items by location. But here I can, oh dear, give me a date, uh, 1, 1, 18, 31, 12, 21, I think. Okay, uh, let's see if, what are we doing? Yeah, okay. 
<clears throat> Hopefully it'll give us some numbers. No, it never does, does it? What is that? One, one eighteen. Oh, here they are. I'm way over here. What flow fields give us is an ability to create matrices of numbers. Very simply. I can go in here <clears throat> and even though I sorry, let me just why doesn't Kronos have decent demo data in it? That's so annoying, isn't it? Let's see. All right, here we go. So here we have uh, inventory. We got some sales here anyway. Come, on. here we go. Sales. So <clears throat> I have an account called Adver Selling Expenses for Advertising, and there's a total of 114,991 dollars of transactions in that account. But here I can break that number down by date. So all I need to do with a flow field is tell Navision that uh, I want to go into this table and I've defined the table, which is a GL entry table. Let's have a look. It's the general ledger entries. And I said, I want you to take a filter from here and a filter from here and apply those to the general ledger entry, go through and add up the totals. It's uh, <clears throat> fairly straightforward and I'm sure you've all seen the matrices. And these are quite good, but the, the beauty is we it doesn't take a lot of code to do this. I can do it myself without being a, a high-end developer. I don't need to write up complex code to get this. <clears throat> Very straightforward to get these numbers together. So also very easy to change them. So now I want to show you that um, We have, when I go back here, I can see that <clears throat> I have a filter. And let's say I want to see my sales accounts. Well, I can go in here and I can filter in here. And, yeah, come on. There are all my sales accounts. Now, that is applying a filter to a field. It's standard filtering. My filter is going and it's telling SQL that do aware and only give me records where name looks like sales. Straightforward and simple. But what about here? What have I got here? Well, actually, this is my net change. And if I look at the number, then I can see it's the net change from, uh, from, okay, from 1st of January to the, uh, 1st of December in 2019. Now, let's say I just want to look at the first six months. Then I can go in, back in there and I can say, great, so I will put a filter on here and I will put it from <clears throat> and now I'll have a filter to show me the, the amounts that I've got there. And if I wanted to know what they are, I could copy this into Excel or I could do what I want, but this is now which we don't need to. So let's have to see how our flow field works. Our flow field, this is a flow field, and I'll show you in a minute how that's calculated. But basically, what I'd like to do is I now I've filtered it by 6210, but I'd also like to only see it for a specific date. So can I add a filter in here? Well, I can't because there's no date here to filter on. So what we have in Navision is, and they changed the name, I think it's called Limit Filters now, is it? Yeah, Limit Totals. So this used to be called a, a, flow, a flow filter as opposed to a flow field. And I think it was changed because flow field and flow filter were so close in name. But basically what I'm saying now is that I'm not going to put a filter on the record here. I'm going to go down into this record here and I'm going to tell Navision, put the record, the filter on the record under here. In other words, put it on GL entry. Okay, so I want to add a filter in here by date. And all I do is I use this other option, which is put the date filter in here, and it will be 1119619. And see what happens. This number suddenly changed. So now what the system has done is it said, I want this date filter here to be passed through, take it from here, take it of the GL, and when I go down to my GL now, boom, up here, I've now got the filter. That is flow field technology. The filter is flowing from the, the header table down into the details, 
and the value is flowing from here up into the header. And those numbers there will add up to 2 million. Okay, and if I remove that, I can see the, all the numbers. Of course, it doesn't go here because it's not part of the same record. <clears throat> so what I want to do is have a look, what is this field? So let's grab this little baby here and have a look. Let's go in designer and let's find the amount field. Oh God, can't even find it. Ah, there we go, and it change. Okay, so basically this field is the one that, that's going to work. So let's see what it does. It's got a formula. And the first thing I do before I show that is that if we look at these fields here, we can see all of these fields, and there's three types of fields. There's a normal, a flow field, and a flow filter. Okay, but this flow field, these normal ones are normal in SQL. And when I go to SQL, and I go to GL account, and I look in here, there's no amount field. Okay, that net change or whatever it's called is not here. So let's go back and find it, back to Navision. So what it is, is this is a flow field, which is done here. And if we look at the properties, we can see here that it has a formula. And then we look into the formula. And the formula says, I want to use the sum. I want to total up some records. I want to total up the sum of some a particular field from a table. The table I want to use is the GL entry, and the field is the amount field from the GL entry. And then I want to put the filters. Remember when I showed you on the GL account, we push the filters from the card down onto the detail lines. And here are the ones. Now, I'm going to take the GL account number. Just ignore this second one because this is a very strange Navision, which is feature which is wonderful and useful but a little bit complex to understand at the beginning <clears throat> just worry about this field here we're fil filtering by the number field and then we've got these other fields business code unit posting date aha and here's a date but hang on there's no date field in the chart of accounts so where is that coming from so that is let's just go out and have a look that is the Flow filter, flow filter, oh my God, I need glasses. Flow filter, date filter. This field also doesn't exist. It's simply a, a holding place. It's part of the metadata. And it tells the, the uh, it tells Navision that anything you type into this filter does not get stored into the table. It's just held and passed down into the flow filter. Remember we typed the date in and we passed it down. So when I go back and look at this formula again, and I look here, and just ignore some of these other fields. I'm only going to worry about this one. Right now, let's just worry about this one and this one. The others are important, but not for very much right now. So basically, it's going to take these. It's going to go to my GL entry table. See, GL entry table. The amount field. It's going to filter. So it's going to put like a where clause and say, just show me GL account number and posting date for my range. Sum up all of those numbers to give me a total. And that's a flow filter. Okay. So let's go and have a look at our GL entry. And if we run this and we put some filters on, let me just, uh, this, oh, sorry, wrong button. It was, there we go. So we're going to take these filters here and put them on here. So I did. Uh, oh, you can't do this, can you? All right. So, oh, sorry. I'm just, let me just start again. Sorry. Just confused everybody there, didn't I? Let me just grab that again. See what I'm trying to do here. Run this. And let's get this guy back here. OK. 
can we do that? Oh, yeah, we go. Right. So I want to find this number here, and I've got to to do that. Let's see if we can put it up here somewhere. I want to filter on six two one zero. So. So the first thing I'm doing is that, and then I can filter by the date, which I did before. Unfortunately, Navigin won't let me do two filters, and I've got to manually go in here, and uh, so it doesn't matter. But basically what I'm telling Navigin to do is to go through and add these particular numbers together to give me a total. Okay, But I'm going to show you that that's not what's really happening, because even though Navigin drills down to the GL entry table, that number there is coming from somewhere different. So let's go and have a look how this all happens and the magic behind it. And we can do that in SQL. <clears throat> so if we look at my GL entry table, I can get, the, get my GL entries and I can put a date filter and get the, those numbers. And over here, these are the amounts that are being totaled up. And I could actually do that. So let's write a query and see what we could actually do. I could actually go, here's my select GL account number from GL entry, like to group by. And if I ran this, then what SQL is doing is it said, look at my uh, account number. I, I'm filtering this just to make less on the screen. That's not important for the adding. But it said, look at GL account 2110 and sum it up. Look for all the entries that have that that amount in there. And if I go back here, I can And these are the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven records are being added up. And hopefully I put a count in there just so we can see. So those seven records are added up. Now, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. You can simply use a, a simple formula like this, generate this, calculate the numbers, and everything's fine. You'll get your totals. But what Navigen does is it introduces the magic of SIF technology. And let's have a look at this SIF. This is a this is a view. Now, remember, it's an index view, which means even though the view is is uh, uh, not persistent, the index is. So the actual data is taking database space up. So if I calculate this way using a formula, I don't use any database space. There's no inserts. It's purely reading. This, on the other hand, the vSIF does require inserts because it's going to create an index. And again, as we said, databases are so fast at writing these days that you don't need to panic too much about it, as long as you keep these simple enough. But let's have a look at this and go in here. And um, have a look at what we've got. And uh, let me just cheat. <coughs> Two records only. You can see here one and six. So what? How is it that this to calculate here? I needed to use seven records, and this is Cronus. Everyone knows Cronus is tiny, but obviously a GL account like whatever this is, inventory account, adjustment account, will have hundreds, millions of not hundreds of thousands, but millions of of rows. So obviously adding a number like this up will be would require going in and telling SQL to go one, two, three, every one of these records and count them up. But here it's done it by two. Why? Because within that record, let's go back a second, there are different dates. So let's work out how that comes about. Let's go back to designer. Where has it gone? There we go. There we go. Oops, no. There we go. Let's have a look in our GL entry. Now, first thing we need to do is, of course, show all of our fields. Uh, sorry. We're going here, and we will look at our indexes and we will just show all our columns because there's a lot of 
hidden stuff here that you want to know about. So unhide these columns and let's have a look. So Navision said to create an, uh, an entry on GL account number posting date. And it said create a, a flow field and the flow field will contain these fields as part of that view. And we'll get to this in a minute, but it's very important that this box here is ticked, which says to actually, it says maintain SIFT index, which means create a, an indexed view. So we're going to go in there and we're going to find that that view contains these fields. It will create these as part of the index and it will create these as part of the index. So let's have a look. Go here. And we can script it, but it's easy enough just to look into here. And we'll see in here. Uh, just double click that. There we go. Geo account number and posting date. Okay. So we can see that that is is created as the um, uh, as an index on uh, on that table on that uh, view and there are our columns we have our GL account number posting date and these are summed now if we look at the numbers here and let's just take this out here a second then what we'll see is that this number here looks fairly meaningless like look at this, all these records have the same number and so do these. And what are these numbers and how do they relate? Well, it's really simple. This is simply a count. It's just increasing. It says there were two records in here. If we go into a GL entry table and we did the same. We'll see that, sorry, let's go back. We can see here that 1110, uh, and they're, they're sorted differently. This is telling me to index on GL account number and posting date. So I would need to do the same here. And now we will see that 110, we see these two entries, they've both got the same GL account number and the same date. So the view is going to cluster them together and it's going to take the sum of this, which is 154 and 1.3 million. And we go here and hopefully there's going to be a number here that is the sum of those two numbers. And then the next one will add 147. That's an easy one because there's only one record. So it's basically grouping exactly, exactly like we did here in our GL. We grouped, we sorted, ordered it by a GL account number, and uh, we then added the, some of these up together. So it's doing the same thing, except it's maintaining it. Okay, so that is fundamentally how it works. Now let's grab my PowerPoint back again, and let's go into this into a little bit of code. PowerPoint. Okay, do I have to one second? Okay. Ah, okay. So <clears throat> what we're doing is we're talking looking at a number of entries. We group them. And we're grouping to say that it's the same. Whoa. No, I did that go backwards. Hang on. Sorry. Uh, I can do this. Yeah, okay. So if we if we look here. We can see that one, two, three, four GL entries with the same account number and the same date. So we can add those numbers up and we group this into one entry. Down here, if we look at the GL account number, we have three with the same GL account number, two with the same date. So we're going to create a total for this and a total for this. So the, the magic happens when... Did this when we have a look at the relationship here now what I've done on the left ah, that's why I needed that picture sorry you do need this picture here what I've done is I've created two scripts one which says show me the GL entries another one that says show me vsif one on the GL entry and we see the numbers that come out okay and then what we do is we put them into Excel and we have a look and we group them together. I grouped, used Excel grouping. This is a GL account. 
this is the view. And as you can see, that first entry by itself gets this amount. The VSIF creates one entry for it. The next six records are added together, 530,000, summed and put into here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, so we can see now that if I want to know the, the balance on a particular date, I just have to pull one number. I don't need to pull all of these records. But if I wanted to pull all the total for account number 2110, then in, in a GL entry, if I did a sum, I'd still have to count every one of these individually. So I'd have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 records. But here, I just need to count two records. I just need to create this one and this one to get the same number. So what we are doing is we're consolidating all of the numbers to get performance to be able to read a lot faster. Okay, so just to sum up, I'm going to go back to Navish in a minute. We, um, a filter is applied to the actual record you're viewing. A flow filter applies to the fields underneath. It carries through. So where we get now is we have two, uh, two words that you'll see sometimes, and you'll see sums and fields, calc sums and calc fields. If you create a flow field like we just did, so we created a, a flow field here, and the flow field is in the GL account, and it's in net change, which my eyes just won't refuse to everything. This is a, a flow field, and to calculate this in Navision, we would use calc field, because it's a field that we're calculating. Now I can do the same thing by writing code, going into here, into my GL entry, and telling Navision to, to filter on these two fields, and then calculate the, the sum directly here. That's a calc sum. So often, I, I see a lot of people when they start out in Navision that have a lot of difficulty understanding the difference between calc fields and calc sums. But quite simply, calc fields means you have to have created a flow field, and the flow field is the template. And once you've done that, you can say to Navision, I've already told you the template. I've told you how it sets up. Now go and calculate it. Calc sums, on the other hand, you have to write all the code to actually generate the filters and the field settings you need before you can actually do the calculation. All right. Okay. So now if I can just get back to my Excel. Uh, what you can see here is that because of the complexity of the key, if I have, I just said I had 2120 and then 220. If I have a lot of fields, a lot of columns, the more columns I add, the more calculations I have to do to get the sum amount. So when I look at my um, calculation here, I can see that this has two elements. Okay. And the two elements mean that it's, I will have every time there's a change of account number or a change of posting date, I've got to add these together. If I look even more complex, I have with dimensions. There's other keys in here that will make it even more complex. Okay. So now, if I go back to my SQL and I look at this here, this is a comparison. This is using a using Navision, uh, just using the GL entry and going one by one through every GL entry. To get this number, SQL had to go to seven GL entries. To get this one, it had to go to 89 entries to get it, 2310. If I look at 2310 here, it only had to do 23. So obviously, uh, it's still, there's still overhead in maintaining this to read the data. And this is very important because let me show you something in Navision that's really stupid. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. It was very smart in Navision, but it's very stupid in SQL because it, there's no point in it in SQL. If I look at item ledger entry, item ledger entry has a flow field uh, called cost amount actual. And if I look at that, it has a, an, a drill down where it calculates from the item ledger entry uh, it looks at the detail, the value, the value entry to calculate the sums. 
Now, unfortunately, this actually w slows Navigen down. You're actually faster if you remove the uh, the index here because what Navigen has to do, no matter what, it always has to read two records to calculate the value entry. So if you have things like your uh, uh, adjust cost routines are slow, one of the things you can look into, and it doesn't work always. You need to check it, of course. But basically, I have to read every entry twice, once to get the, the first day and the, the second to get the end. So this will never make the, the system faster. This only works, flow fields only work when you have a lot of sub records. So if you have a GL account and that GL account, every account has 100,000 records, then vSIF technology is very, very good. If you have a um, sales header and it typically has three lines and you're calculating the amount, it doesn't have any benefit to use it because of the way it's calculating. So we can have a look at that and we can, can see. That Dave, we're nearly out of time. Yep. In, in short, if I may pose a question here, what is the reason behind that we have still those kind of flow fields of which you'd say they don't make sense enough actually to have them? What's the reason behind that we have them still? <laughs> you saw my uh, my pre first presentation about uh, historic. It's because someone likes it. Uh, it it's, it's probably historic. You know, someone needs to sit down and have a look and say, what on earth are we doing here? Why are we doing this? And people don't because people are very scared to touch that code. It's there is a it's very religious the Navigation code, and I think there are you have to pray and do things before you're allowed to change the master code. People are just too scared to touch it. Uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> but you can see now. Let me let me just prove this to you. So here, here we go. Here is a scenario. We have GL account number and posting date in this field. So these records have to go 23 times, 27 times, two times. Okay. Now let's just do something really simple. Really, really simple, just to prove this. If I go here, uh, wrong button. If I go here, and I go to my GL entry table and key, and I say, well, hang on, what if I do this? What if I put in here a new key, and it is just GL account number, nothing else, and then I put a mount in here, right, and save this, and now I go back to SQL, and I say, what did SQL do? Well, SQL being nice, hopefully it will have created a new vSIFT, and it did, number 11. So instead, instead of looking at this one here, let me look at the other one and see what happens. If I now use this new calculation, it's one round trip. Okay, so it, it's, it's calculating much, much faster. But you can see that if there's only one record, there's no advantage. There's, if it's a one indexing, it's going to be ex it's the same, except you've got the uh, you've got to maintain a a V sift without reason. There's no logic behind it, but it's there. Yeah. If, if, and uh, let's say I agree with what you said about history. Of course, uh, the the advantage of creating a flow field like this on a table it's it's an easy uh, accessible element. Eh? You can put it on a screen. You don't need to yeah. do create functions yep, yep, or whatever. Yep. So it's an easy so to implement you. a thing. Yep, and we're getting there. Because there's another thing we have in in um, Navigen is this. Remember I said there's all these hidden when you when you open Navigen up, these all these hidden fields here you don't see, but you need to have them because there's a few things here. This field here called maintain SQL index and maintain SIFT index. Navigen historically needs indexes. It can't work without them. It, it can now in 2013 on, but uh, still we have this ability to turn it off. Now if I go here and I turn this off, what it means is that Navigen will still think it's there. It'll still send the commands to SQL and do everything, but SQL will just go and run through and calculate. So you can turn this off. The index is now gone. Let's confirm that. If I go here and I go back to here and run this, it doesn't exist. It's gone. But because, yeah, yeah. What do you want me to do? Just start again. We can start again if that's what you want. About all the magic. 
Now, this isn't the key you should remove. Just be aware of that, yeah? This is one that is definitely, it's one of the most important ones in the system. <laughs> okay, so this is a Cronus database, but never remove that key that I just removed, okay? But I just want to say, everything still works. This time, though, it really is genuinely going to these GL entries and actually is, this is the genuine calculation it's actually doing now. So if you tick that box to turn it off, it still works. Everything is the same. But if this tick box is off, then SQL is going and doing all the work itself. It's going in there and generating a sum, and it is doing this command at the top. If we tick the box, then it's doing the, the code at the bottom. Okay? So all we I'm not going to talk about performance, and this isn't a performance uh, session. This is about uh, vSift. I would recommend at this point that everyone spend some time in SQL Server uh, Management Studio, play with vSIFs, get to use them and get them to understand them, because when you understand them, you'll know when to use them, when not to use them. In the old days, in Navision, it was the only option. You didn't have another option except the vSIF technology. So we had to do it. There wasn't another option. Now you do, but you have to understand the implications. And definitely, things like the item ledger entry, where uh, where it's drilling down to one field, makes absolutely no sense to have a, a flow field. And even I would go to the point of saying that this field on amount, uh, we're in the sales header, this field here, uh, it's drilling down on the sales line. Unless you're, unless there's no special filters. Unless you're a company that has uh, 10,000 line invoices, these things are, aren't necessary. So, it's um, it, it was the beauty of simplicity, but I think we sort of simplicity is gone from Navish in these days. It's no longer the simple, pure product it used to be. It's still great. But um, uh, it is uh, it is a different world. So that's it. Uh, thanks very much. I don't know if there are any questions. We have some time left. I don't. I didn't have had to have to interfere because of questions in the question window. Uh, it was just a question from my side. Uh, if there are any questions from the attendees feel free to use the questions window to pose them. We have some time left till the hour. Uh, and, and yes, you've got it on the slide. Thanks. Thanks to you, Dave. Uh, typically, this topic on, on uh, uh, flow fields and uh, uh, some index fields and indexes uh, behind it, it's uh, it's always a challenge to explain. And I think I, maybe sounds a bit strange, but being a, a trainer myself on many days a year, uh, compliment to to your explanation it also opened up a new view or a new way of looking at it to me um, so yeah uh, I think uh, may, uh, yeah maybe the fact that we don't have questions yet at the moment uh, where we normally do have also in your previous session Dave uh, makes clear that people uh, uh, understood quite clearly what you uh, explained and uh, this is a combination of indexes and uh, uh, flow fields so while i'm still talking uh, people uh, don't tend to feed uh, questions so i think we're going to to close up uh, nicely within the time compliment also thank you very much dave thank you very much to everybody well, who, thanks for the invite, Luke. I just want to. I just want to say thank you to you guys. I mean, I know Joe gets a lot of thanks, and he does a wonderful job. We couldn't survive without him. Yeah. But uh, your persistence and the work you do is, I think, sometimes neglected. <laughs> You're really, really doing a great job to put this together, and I love this opportunity to be able to get out there and share my knowledge. But I think you are, you know, Mark putting coming up with the idea of this, and you actually being the, the person that actually puts his boots on and does the work. I mean, you've done a great job to pull this together. So I just want to say thank you, Luke, for, for everything you've done in making this happen because I don't think you ever get thanked for that and you do more work than anyone else. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> um, 
And don't for, what I don't wanted to forget to say, uh, one of your ideas, Dave, if you're, uh, um, let's say, using the recording on uh, YouTube, it would be great if you could put on a like or some comment on, yes, on what you maybe missed. Um, we're, we haven't been involved in a lot of uh, feedback gathering in general on this, but you could use YouTube to that. I mean, we're, we're, we like to share, but it's always also nice to get some feedback. We probably pay some attention on, to this on, on the next newsletter, but uh, feel free to uh, uh, feed some uh, feedback on this. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice uh, uh, remaining part of the day or the remaining part of the evening, and hope to see you next time in four weeks' time. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Bye.